A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I'm doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need to except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him for this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I've done for you? You call me Master Teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. 
If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I've given you a model to follow, so as I've done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. That's Psalm 52. I am like a growing olive tree. Olives and, and olive oil are so crucial throughout the scriptures in, in the ancient Levant. The oil from the olive is uh, produced through an extended process. It's, it's not just crushing the olive actually that, that produces the, the oil. Uh, when you crush a grape, there's juice that's immediately produced. But with, with an olive, it's got to be crushed into a paste. Uh, and then this paste from the, the crushed olives is, is put in a, uh, on a mill, a millstone. And uh, then it's pressed. And uh, oil and water are produced. And, and then the, the oil and the water have to separate. And then through a chemical process, uh, the oil is, a, is eventually uh, extracted and, and produced. And, and the water is, is thrown away. This pressing, uh, this plucking and pressing of the olives uh, took place on the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus will go after the Last Supper. He is the olive that will be pressed, uh, made into a paste, extracted, and then pr from him will be produced this, this crucial product, olive oil. Olive oil obviously is used for food, for cooking, for healing, uh, doctors say that uh, it, it actually reduces heart disease, uh, you know, a teaspoon of olive oil a day. And of course we use it for the sacraments. And we present the oils tonight, this uh, mass of the Lord's Supper, Holy Thursday evening, blessed by the bishop at the chrism mass. Oil of the sick, used for the anointing of the sick, oil of the catechumens, used for uh, those who enter into the church, those who are baptized, and the sacred chrism, and olive oil with balsam, with a perfume mixed inside of it, which is used also at baptism, but also at confirmation, and then at holy orders, when a man is ordained a deacon and then a priest olive oil. We are, as the psalmist says, the growing olive tree, as Christ was throughout his life, that growing olive tree, which means, though, that we are to be crushed, that we are to die. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones, also says the psalmist, when, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, says St. Paul, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. We always proclaim the death. We ourselves are always dying, like those olives, dying to our ego, dying to our, our needs and our wants, dying to our inclinations, our preferences, so that we can be the Lord's completely his, like that extra virgin olive oil used then for the health of ourselves and, and the, the health and well-being of the world. Olive oil is so essential, but it can't be made without this process of death, crushing the, the olive. This olive oil then, or the sacred chrism, was also used in the Old Testament and then throughout the, you know, the uh, modern era, the Middle Ages, uh, to anoint kings and queens. Right? Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So too is the Catholic priest. So too are all of we baptized into Christ's priesthood. Priests, prophets, and kings. We cannot be those positions without 
this oil, without this dying to ourselves. The priest, the high priest in Jerusalem, would enter into the Holy of Holies once a year. This was the the inner sanctum of the temple of Jerusalem. Only he could enter, and only he could enter alone. He who was anointed. And he would, as he entered into this sacred place where God dwelt, he shed everything that was part of him. Just himself. His pure, raw self alone. And the only thing he would do in there was sprinkle the blood. The blood of the offering in atonement for the sins of the world. He had to die as he entered into this sacred space. Well, the Catholic priest, and we celebrate tonight the institution of the priesthood, the Catholic priest enters into this Holy of Holies all the days of his life. He is a man set apart by God, consecrated to do this, to shed himself, to die to himself and enter into this this pure, raw, vulnerable state before God and for the sake of the people to sprinkle his blood, the blood of the offering in atonement for the sins of the world and to renew the world and to bring the world closer to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you too, when you pray to God, when you wash each other's feet as Christ commanded us to do, acting in a way as priests, you also are called to Enter into the Holy of Holies, both for yourself and for your family. You who are anointed, likewise, with the sacred chrism at baptism and confirmation, called to shed everything behind, to die, and to be one with God. That is our ultimate calling. That is your ultimate calling, the union of your soul with the Lord. Die tonight, my fellow olive trees. Die tonight with the Lord. In Gethsemane, let yourself be crushed to be God's. He will make you a beautiful, fragrant oil for the salvation of the world. Amen.